Welcome to prayer during the day on Friday the 24th of July. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Together we pray. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. Psalm 142 Together we say Bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name I cry aloud to the Lord To the Lord I make my supplication I pray my complaint to the Lord and tell him of my trouble When my spirit faints within me You know my path. In the way wherein I walk have they laid a snare for me. I will go to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to. And no one is with me. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. God of compassion, you regard the forsaken and give hope to the crushed in spirit. 
Hear those who cry to you in distress and bring your ransomed people to sing your glorious praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and begun to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a young man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Judas, in Luke's account, appears diabolical. Luke employs cosmic language to indicate that he is in the grip of evil forces. Perhaps it is this vocabulary that has distanced us from Judas. After years of journeying with Jesus, learning and sharing life, it is hard to imagine ourselves acting in the same way as Judas, abandoning faithful discipleship in an act of reckless disloyalty. And yet Judas was a success in the ways that most impress people today. He was successful both financially and politically. He was clever with money, if, as John tells us, also duplicitous. He skillfully manipulated the political forces of the day to accomplish his goal. Perhaps this invites us to ponder whether we understand more of Judas than we initially think. Judas displays not only diabolical characteristics but also deeply human instincts. Which of us, as Jesus' disciples, has not at times withdrawn from him, been disillusioned or impatient, wished to abandon, abandon the way and choose our own? Searching for the humanity in Judas prevents us from creating a villain too far removed from our own lives. Judas serves as reminder of the frailty of discipleship and as the passage continues that there is a place at the table even for him. We have gathered here to meet with our God in worship. 
Let us pray to him now. Lord, awaken in us our need of you and make us hungry and thirsty for you, both as individuals and as the Church of God. Let no other issues sidetrack us from seeking you and increase our love and compassion so that we long to serve you out of your love to the world around us. In the wider church today, we pray for the ministers and the people of the churches in Dover. We pray too for the dioceses of northwestern Pennsylvania and Bethlehem. We ask God's blessing on all the people and the ministers in those places. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, allow our world to see the true value of things so that the worthless and dangerous is revealed and real needs acknowledged. Guide our leaders in wisdom and integrity and enable us all to cooperate in proper care and stewardship of the world's resources. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we eat our food this week, remind us of your spiritual feeding. May the meals we prepare and eat together be opportunities for drawing closer to one another and to you. We pray for our town. We pray for the businesses here and all those who are striving to make ends meet. We pray for our schools and for the staff and pupils as they begin their summer break. And we remember too all those who live in Chalk Avenue, Leslie Crescent, Wayside and Wayside Avenue. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who need medical treatment or are waiting in pain for surgery, those anxiously awaiting test results. We pray for those who have become addicted and long to be set free. And we pray too for all those whose wrong choices have ended in heartache, dissolution and despair. We pray for those that we know to be unwell at this time, remembering especially Francis Sherwood, Alan Hutchinson, David Bolton, Muriel Davies, Joe Coley, Jenny Jordan, June Bennett, Amanda Chalmers and Jill Davis. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, welcome into your eternity all who have spent their lives coming to you and now come to be with you forever. Have mercy on all those approaching death who do not know you. 
but reject what they imagine you to be. May they respond to the true and living God and know your love forever. We remember in our prayers today, Mike Docker and Bill Stafford, who have died recently. We pray for their families, for all who mourn for them. Lord, in your mercy. We now keep a time of silence and we bring before God our own prayers, whether in the silence of our own hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, thank you for feeding us with spiritual food that satisfies our souls. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the collect. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God grant to the world justice, truth and peace. Amen. Amen.